Okay, so just getting set up and ready to go here. In this session, my main two things I want to cover are the effects of weight and light on your growing crop. But we're going to look at a number of things in terms of the general setup for home production, which is very transferable to commercial production. And this is important because really everything ties together. It's, I rarely look at one piece of my system in isolation. So, and because this is looking at the effects of both weight and light, it's going to take time. So we're just going to get things started today. Then I'll do a follow-up video uh, when I uncover the crop, and then we'll do a follow-up video on the day that the crops are ready to harvest. That way we can do some comparisons and get a sense of uh, how these different things affect the crop at different points in its growth cycle. So usually I just grow one tray of sunflower at a time. And I grow sunflower at home because it's the thing I eat the most, it's the thing I like the most, I think it's the best value for time and energy and space and everything, and they're just bloody good. So I generally do a tray at a time, but uh, I'm eating a lot lately, and so I want to do two trays at a time to ensure that I've got what I need for, for the period um, uh, of, of when they mature and when I harvest. So this uh, uh, tray I sowed about three or four days ago and just uncovered today and today I'm going to sow two trays and so within seven or eight days I'm going to have two trays that mature instead of just one so it's going to give me a lot more uh, food to work with and we'll see how that cycle goes I may sort of alternate between two and one to find the right amount of production for my consumption so another just quick look at the system I have two sets of lights here so I can do two trays one in the front one in the back as it is now, these, these ballasts both have a, a really a high K-value blue, uh, blue colored lights. What uh, I'm going to do when, when the, this uh, tray, these trays get into the light cycle is I'm going to put a yellower uh, type of light in this rear one. So what we're going to get to see is, is how the, the, the microgreens respond to the two different types of light. And through the germination stage, I'm going to have them front and back. So one tray will be here, one tray will be in the back. But when it comes to the growth stage, I'm going to turn them around. And the reason I want to do that is because there's two things we're looking at here in terms of effects on growth. One is light and one is weight. And so I'm going to have the heavier weighted one in the back and the lighter one in the front. And uh, if I keep it that way, then it's hard to know which variable is affecting things. So once I uncover them, I'll switch them out. So half of each tray will be under blue light half of each tray will be under the more yellow light, and we'll get to see uh, what kind of growth differences we see there, if any, on this small scale. So I've got a couple trays ready to go. I've already pre-soaked my seeds, so I'm just basically gonna do my sowing and everything here. Um, it's a lot easier with one tray, to be honest. So my process is to uh, get my soil a little wet. It's usually fairly wet when I um, prep the trays with soil, but I just want a little bit of moisture in there because this is the moisture that the seed is going to use to germinate. And it's the seed's contact with the soil that makes sure there's constant moisture to the seed. And if your soil's too dry, even if the seed is in good contact, there's not going to be enough moisture for the seed to absorb and to germinate. So the, the, and you can kind of, over time, lifting your trays gives you a sense of how much water is in there. So I've soaked two trays worth here. The way I soak these is I give them a rinse in the colander. I soak them in hot water. And I soak them in the hottest water that will come out of my tap, which is about anywhere between 52 and 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, and then as it sits, that water is going to cool, but it starts off very warm. So it does act as a little bit of a sanitizer. And the hot water um, definitely causes things to germinate a little uh, faster. So I've, I've used that method for a long time. It's winter here in Vancouver. Uh, I keep my, my apartment a little, you know, a little on the warm side. Um, uh, actually, no, sorry, a little on the cool side, but I have heat mats for my, um, uh, for my growing here. So I can, I can really control how fast things grow. So I'm usually uh, not that specific with my sowing. Uh, I know I'm basically going to have to uh, spread the seed amongst these two trays, so I'm just going to eyeball it. And if one looks a little more once I've done my sowing, I can just distribute that later. So I'm going to do a quick layout here, all done with that, and then spreading these out to get good distribution. 
So once again, when we're spreading out our seeds, we want them, we don't want a lot of overlap and we don't want a lot of bare space. We want them as evenly distributed as possible. On a commercial scale, I tend to do this a lot faster because I have a lot more space to work with. On a home scale, this is meant to be a relaxing and fulfilling exercise, so I'm not so focused on speed. For the purposes of this video, I'm going a little faster than usual. So pretty good distribution there. I'm going to do the second one, which looks a little heavier. I seeded these, I soaked these at about uh, 275 milliliters of seed dry. And then as the seed soaks, it does stand sort of anywhere from 20 to 40 percent. And so I've sowed enough trays of these over the years that I can just eyeball it and get a sense once I've uh, laid things out, um, whether I've got the right rate. The distribution on these trays looks fairly good and fairly similar. This one might be a little heavier, but I'm not too bothered about that. Okay, so I've got my trays sewed. I've given a water in the soil. Now I'm going to do a second watering, and I might need a little more water in here. This just makes sure I'm getting water right on the seed and getting that good contact with the soil. This is also warm water in here, so being winter time, my soil is stored outside and so it's quite cool. And so I don't want to sort of sow into cool soil and slow down the, the cycle. The nice thing about doing that second watering is I can see how good my seed distribution was and I can sort of readjust it. And I do, I do feel this one's just a little heavier, so I'm just gonna shift that over there. Okay, so these are ready to go. Lots of water in there. Um, and what I want to make sure is there's not too much water because if these are totally saturated, that's when you're going to get uh, disease problems. So now I need to integrate this into what I have going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one away, just for now, and I'm going to put my first one here. So I've got a heating pad on here already, so this is going to go into the heating pad. I'm going to put another tray over top. And I'm going to put my weight on top. I love these blocks. They're 8 by 16. They weigh 14 and a half pounds. So they're just perfect uh, weight for sunflowers for most crops, actually. Um, and they fit really well in there while leaving a bit of space here. And this distributes the weight, weight well enough. And this space here is good because it does allow for a little bit, or, bit of better airflow. Okay. Now that I'm pushing to the back. So my first tray is sewed. So the thing we're going to introduce into this system, um, which I haven't talked about in quite a while, but is how I originally used to grow, and I still think is one of the best ways to utilize a very limited amount of space is, so my next tray is going to go in, actually, what I'm going to do, sorry, I'm going to put a tray down here. Put a tray down here. I'm going to put my other heating pad down now. Just here, ready to go. So the reason I put this tray here is the heating pad is going to be more effective on a solid tray than it is going to be on, on the, uh, the wire mesh here. So I'm putting that down. Now the tray that I'm germinating goes down. And now for this one, for the weight, instead of having an empty tray with a, a concrete block on top, I'm just going to use my growing tray. So this is going to sit right on top of there. And in an ideal world, and, and, and indeed practically, uh, this is going to mature at about the same time that this needs to be uncovered. So what I'll do is I'll take this off, I'll harvest it and, and package it, and this one will be ready to go. So this system has worked really well for me in the past. Um, if I find this one's getting uh, a little too far ahead, maybe growing too fast, I can turn off the heating pad, uh, and if it's growing too slow, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, there's n almost no way that I'll, I'll, I'll take this off to harvest too early. So the cement block we put on the back was 14 and a half pounds. This tray here at the moment is about six, actually just over six pounds. And it's actually going to fluctuate in weight because the crop is going to grow and add a little bit of weight, only about a pound over, over time. But as it uses up the water and the water evaporates, the water, um, the water content will go down and that'll lose, uh, cause it to lose weight as well. 
So this is always going to be about six pounds, maybe a little lighter at some points. Probably not going to get too much heavier in terms of how I water it. Uh, I can easily water it on here with a watering can still, or if I need to bring it out, I can, I can do that and pull it out. This makes it a little tricky to water from below, which would require me to take this off and put it in my tray here for watering. I don't want to do that. I do not want to disturb these seeds when they're germinating. My rule of thumb is once these seeds are in the germination state, I do as much as I can to avoid uh, disturbing them at all. Uh, if, you, if you pull that tray off and it disturbs all the roots, it's going to slow down growth. Every disturbance works against you in terms of uh, disturbing those. So I'm going to leave it on there. This tray has a good amount of water, so it's going to be good for a day or two. It's not directly on the heating pad, so it's not going to uh, evaporate off the soil surface as quickly. And uh, yeah, I can water above really easily with my water can. And uh, I have no problem watering above with my sunflower because I give them a cold water bath when I harvest them anyways. If this was a crop like radish, which I don't like to get the foliage wet on because it's really, really hard to dry them out, um, then I might, uh, what I could do is I could put another tray in between them here. So have another tray and that way I can just take this one out and leave that other tray on top and that's going to minimize the disturbance. If I really wanted to, I could still have an empty tray and a concrete block and have this on top. That's still an option. Then I would have 20 pounds on top of that tray, which is completely fine for sunflower as well. I will do two of these 14 and a half pound blocks on sunflower and it will push it off no problem whatsoever. A finer microgreen like arugula, that may not work so well with, but for sunflower, it's not an issue. So now we're set up and ready to go. We've got two new germinating trays, both with heating pads. Uh, this one has 14 and a half pounds on it. This one has about six pounds on it. We're gonna give these about four days to, um, to germinate and uh, start to push these trays up. Then we'll remove the top trays rotate them the other way. We're going to have the blue light in the front, the yellower light in the back, and then we're going to look at the, what the growth looks like at the germination stage. So as soon as we uncover them, we'll look at some of the differences and get a sense of how weight is affecting those. And then we'll watch how growth goes over the next three or four days with the different types of light. And if I'm organized enough, I might set up a time lapse for that so we can see the difference there. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Now that this is going, I have a little um, sheet I bring down there. Uh, this blue light gets really annoying after a while. So I just bring this down in order to sort of reduce the light coming out into my kitchen space. I spend a lot of time cooking and a lot of time in here. So that's just going to reduce the impact of that light. So yeah, we'll do another video in about three or four days to look at the uh, germination results. And then we'll go from there. If you've made any comments, I can't see them uh, at the moment, the way I've got things set up today. Uh, but I will look and uh, I can respond to comments a little bit later. Uh, hopefully you found that valuable in terms of getting a sense of, first of all, the flow of, of overlapping crops. Uh, this is a system you can use on a commercial scale, which I've done uh, completely. I could have 100 trays growing with 100 trays underneath them germinating. I've done that plenty of times, works really, really well. Uh, you just need to really, really monitor things to make sure you're uncovering things at the right time and controlling growth if they're, if they're out of sync. Uh, but generally that's worked out really, really well. Uh, so hopefully that's valuable and we'll uh, follow up in a, in a few days with the first results.